Hello everyone, I'm Eric from Full Lotus Yoga, and today we're going to build a headstand from the ground up. Now here's the pose we're talking about. The body forms an upside down tower with a foundation on the forearms, the hands, and the head. It's fairly demanding in terms of strength and balance and concentration, but it's also really rewarding. And it's a lot less intimidating if you've got the right knowledge and some good practice time behind you. This video will show you how to align your arms, your head, your torso, and your legs into a successful headstand. We'll start with the arms. Your forearms will be the foundation for this pose. We'll set them up into a triangle shape that will make a sturdy foundation and help you keep your balance. By pushing them down into the mat, you'll also take some weight off your neck and help keep yourself safe. Here are some details on how to align your arms. You want your elbows to be down at shoulder width on the mat. This will be the safest position for the shoulder joint and also give you the most stable foundation. If your elbows wander too wide, you'll be more unstable front to back. And if they go too narrow, you'll be wobbly from side to side. So you can measure the correct distance using the web of the thumb inside the opposite inner elbow. Join your hands together and tuck your pinky finger down into your hand. This will let you get both of the outer forearms down onto the mat. Then you can open your hands just wide enough to make a cradle for your head. In placing your head, you'll want to aim the crown of your head straight down into the earth. To find the crown, put your fingers in front of your ears and move them straight up. This is the point that you'll want to aim straight down. If you roll your weight back on your head, you'll tend to roll backward. If you move the weight forward, you could do a variation called a Bregma headstand, but that's less stable and it tends to put the whole spine into a backbend. You can try that one later, but for now, keep your weight centered right about here. So here's my friend Xu Jing to help us all out. Okay, so now I measure my eyeballs, I join my fingers, tuck my pinky in, put my head down. Okay, so once you get here, you want to lift up your hips and walk your feet slowly towards your head. We're trying to balance the torso, keeping the hips right above the shoulders. If your back is rounding a little bit, try to find more length in the front of your body and make sure your elbows stay firmly rooted down. If your hamstrings are a bit tighter, you might get a bit stuck somewhere around here. To get a little closer, you can roll onto the very tips of your toes or step onto a stable prop like a chair or a block or a wall. Just make sure if you use a block that you don't roll it over. Once you've got your hips above your shoulders with good length in your front body, your torso should be nicely balanced. This is an asana in itself, it's a half headstand. And you can practice here, taking most of the weight with your arms until you're comfortable in the pose. Your neck will get more used to taking a little more weight, and your blood pressure system will get used to being upside down. You can also get a really nice passive exhalation here, with gravity helping, and that will expel some stale gases from your lungs and stretch out your diaphragm. When you're comfortable here, you can move towards the full headstand where you lift your legs. If your torso is nicely balanced, it shouldn't be too hard. When you lift up your legs, you'll introduce a chance of falling. So having a wall behind you, or someone who's been trained to spot, will be safer and it'll help you relax your mind. I'm going to show you two different ways to lift up your legs into the full pose. One will rely more on core strength, while the other takes more dexterity or skill. So first, we'll start with the core strength method. From the half headstand, use your core strength to bring your legs in close to your body. Keep your knees bent and slowly lift them up until your thighs become vertical. Keep breathing and keep your balance while you bring your shins up as well. You can come down the same way and take a moment's rest in child's pose to let your blood pressure return to normal. The second way to come up is by kicking one leg up, keeping it straight, and following it up with the other leg. The challenge here is to use just the right amount of power so you end up hitting the nice balance point. You want to keep your elbows rooted your torso stable, and your hips stable so you don't end up twisting the hips on your way up. Once you're in the headstand, keep your whole body stable and reach it nicely upward from a firmly rooted foundation. You can engage your belly a little bit so your tailbone doesn't sink too far down. Keep your elbows rooted and your shoulders reaching forward and up towards the floor. When your neck becomes strong and you've got a good sense of balance, 
You can lift your legs until they are completely vertical. Now your bone structure is aligned to take all the weight of your body, and with practice, you can learn to relax your muscles more so you can find a more meditative, more peaceful version of this pose. Ladies, uh, you can choose practice any time a month. Just be aware and take it easy when you've got the flow, uh, especially when it's heavy. And if anyone has high blood pressure or any spinal injury or shoulder injury or a condition with the heart, the eyes or the ears, you should consult a doctor and a good yoga teacher before you attempt this pose. So it's has strength. It's fun and empowering and actually it's very healthy. I'm Shu Jin from Yuna Yogi. And I'm Eric from Full Lotus Yoga. My next video will be about headstand variations and I'll do a third video on preparatory exercises. If you like what you see here, you can follow us online. Thanks for watching. Namaste. Namaste.